Hello, web dwellers. So the other day, someone asked me if I preferred Lord of the Rings or Star Wars. And I might have just stared at her for a moment because I was very surprised by the question. Because on one hand, Star Wars is a brilliant feat of special effects and it has contributed a lot to particularly nerdy aspects of our culture, but it's basically just a space opera. And Lord of the Rings is a very well-developed mythology and history of an entire world and multiple races and multiple created languages and also was adapted into award-winning movies. So I might be a little biased on that one. But it does bring up the huge question of books versus movies. And I have very strong feelings about this. I'm a very bookish person. Um, if you haven't picked up yet, I was an English major. I read like all the time. I've averaged, I think, a book and a half or two books a week so far for this year. And I like books a lot. But I have a few pet peeves about the way people argue the books versus movies thing. Um, for one, people like to argue which one is better. And I think that's an inherently wrong argument because they're not the same thing. They're not the same medium. They're not meant to, um, they're not really meant to communicate the same thing. So it's very much an apples oranges thing. You can like one better than the other, but you can't say that one is inherently better than the other. With that said, I kind of definitely prefer books, um, but a lot of it has to do with what you're interested in getting out of the story. So I would say that films are primarily action-based. Um, most of the time they're driven very, very heavily by plot and um, special effects and things that you can see. Whereas books tend to be more character driven. You're going to see a lot more development. You're going to be inside the character's head a lot more. It just, you're going to see more psychology and reasoning and development. Um, and you don't get that in films most of the time because that's difficult to portray visually. And also because it, you, just, you don't have enough time in an hour and a half or two hours to show a character developing over the course of their life or whatever. Um, so I, I like books better because I prefer seeing the character development. Um, so I have a theory about how you should mix the two. Um, because obviously I do still watch films, even though I like books a lot. And I think that watching, a, um, reading a book before you watch the film can really enhance your film experience. Um, because the book tends to have more details and tends to have a more depth of character and motivations and all kinds of things, if you read the book ahead of time, then you bring an understanding of that depth to the film so that even though the film doesn't convey the depth of character or convey even sometimes the depth of the plot, you know what it is and you can kind of read that into the film. And I think it makes for an enhanced experience. For example, earlier this year I read Jurassic Park, which, yes, was a book first. Most movies are. Um, and I'd never seen the film, but I really loved the book, which is saying a lot because I don't read anything remotely horror thriller related at all. Um, but <laughs> Jurassic Park is a very... It's a very intellectual book. There's a lot of kind of philosophy, how we deal with science, how we deal with nature. There's a lot of um, chaos theory and really cool in-depth stuff to it. It's brilliantly written, like breathless horror throughout the whole thing as you're like flipping the pages to see what happens next. And a couple of weeks ago, Brink and I watched the original Jurassic Park film because I hadn't seen it before. And it was beautiful, like seeing dinosaurs live on screen is all very cool, but 
uh, plot wise it's really pretty simplistic so versus the little tiny you know chain of events that you see of things falling apart in the park in the falling apart in the park in the book um in the film it's basically just oh the one scientist guy locked everything down and that's how everything went wrong and that's so simplistic <laughs> and i get it because they don't have time in the film to explain everything and it it would be difficult but it it makes it a much um more simplistic experience and i found that i enjoyed having the experience of having read the book that i could kind of read more of the characters and more of the depth behind the philosophy and the film and i enjoyed it a lot more um, one thing that you can't do if you're going to do that and if you want to enjoy the films is you can't compare every single little thing the film does differently from the book. It's not the book. It's not supposed to be a perfect retelling of the book. I really, 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 really think they should stay close to the sentiment of the book and the plot of the book. But you can't freak out over whether they changed the hair color of a main character. Now, I think it's dumb for them to change the hair color of a main character because how difficult is it to get an actor with the right hair color? But anyhow, you can't freak out about the little changes that they make if you're going to see the film. And I think you can't argue that, oh, the book is better. Well, I mean, yeah, inherently the book is probably better story-wise. It's probably better depth-wise. It's almost always going to be. But you don't go to the film for a depth of story and depth of character development for the most part. You go to see it. And that means that the major attraction to it is seeing the action or the special effects or really beautiful actors or whatever. Um, and, and you just can't compare them the same way. Now, I also think that there are some books that just shouldn't be adapted into movies. And we should get rid of this thinking that if a book is popular, it has to be made into a movie. Because I think that's wrong and um, oversimplifying the two genres. There are some book experiences that just I don't think translate well to film. Because of that, I choose not to see some of the films. Um, now, the one major argument that I think people have for making books into films is people who won't read the book for whatever reason. They can't, they don't like to, whatever. Um, and you can make it into a film and they can still have that experience. I'm sort of willing to accept that, but if it's not the same experience, it's not the same experience. Um, so, for instance, The Giver. I have not seen in film. I read the book when I was in junior high. It was a remarkable experience. I've been reluctant even to reread it because I want to hold on to the strength of that first um, exposure and the strength of the first feelings that that book awakened in me. I do the same thing with other pieces of literature sometimes and I'm then reluctant to cheapen that experience with a film that probably won't capture it the same way. Um, the Giver is one of those. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which I also haven't watched, but is a fantastic short story that just I, I don't think needed to be made into film. I just, there are some, there are some stories like that that just you don't have to put in the film. Um, on the flip side, there are some that the films are a really fantastic experience in and of themselves, even if they're nothing like the book. Um, and sometimes it has a lot to do with which one you experience first. For example, The Jungle Book. No, not the animated Disney Jungle Book. Don't talk to me about that. But there is a live action version that um, Disney did. And I saw that before I read the actual book. Both are brilliant, frankly. I really like the film, even though it has little in common with Rudyard Kipling's story, which is a beautiful um portrayal of what it was like to be in india during british occupation and it's filled with just um lovely goofy poetry and representations of animals and it, it it's brilliant but i like the film even though the film is nothing like the book 
Um, partially probably because I experienced it first and also just because it's a completely different medium. So I don't approach it like I'm expecting to reread the book, but, but seeing it. You have to approach it like it's a totally new experience, like it's a totally new thing, because it is. It's not the same as the book. But in the end, yes, the books are probably better. So, what about you guys? Where do you come down on this debate? Books, movies, somewhere in between? Are there um, movies that you thought were particularly horrible adaptations of a book or particularly great adaptations? Are there movies you have chosen not to see because you really liked the book? I would, I would love to know that there's someone else like me out there. Um, but yeah, leave your comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And we'll see you guys later.